I have a beauty for you today. This quilt, oh, this quilt is so cool. And I just can't wait to share it with you. Before we get started though, my name is Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me. So this is a string quilt, meaning that the maker used strings or long pieces of fabric to make this quilt and layered them on top of one another to create this really cool look. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we take a closer look. This quilt measures approximately 60 by 74. It is in excellent condition and it's just a cozy, wonderful quilt. It also meets the approval of my unofficial, or official maybe, quilt tester Daisy. She loves this quilt and she doesn't love all of them. Just so you know, there are some that she will not lay on, <laughs> believe it or not. So let's get started taking a closer look at this amazing, amazing quilt. Okay, so this is a string quilt and it is so cool. The way it's constructed, the way it's laid out, all of it. It's a lot of fun to make and I do have a tutorial coming up on how to make one of these quilts. But in the meantime, we'll take a peek at this one and see how this maker made it. So you'll notice that the squares are here or here. Here, let me get my papers, I'll show you. And there are 49 of these units in this quilt. And you can see one here and then it's just turned and placed here and also here and here. And it makes a secondary pattern. Well, one secondary pattern. There's another one I'll show you in a minute of this diamond. But if you look just a little bit over here, I'll move it so you can see. It also makes an X, which is really neat too. So we see this pattern throughout and it gives it a really cool geometric element when you look at it as a whole because you see all these crisscrosses and diamonds and it's a lot of fun. So the maker used darks in the middle of each of the eight inch blocks to give that pattern or illusion or whatever you want to call it. And the, the maker stuck with blacks, blues, dark browns, or even some dark greens that we see. So this quilt has an interesting construction because the middle was placed down first, then the next fabric was built on each side of it. So this fabric was put right sides together, stitched, and then flipped, and then it just kept building out. At least that's the way I believe this one was made. That's usually the way they are made. And you can kind of tell because each dark color in the centers of each of these eight inch blocks are recessed a little bit. So there's nothing underneath them and it builds out. This maker used everything I think but cottons. <laughs> so they're all heavyweight fabrics. There are wools, denims, suiting, and all kinds of things. There's even some corduroy and some upholstery fabric, I believe in it, but it's all heavy weight. And because it's usually built on a foundation, meaning a piece of fabric underneath and then built out, it does stabilize whatever you use. So you can use some non-traditional fabrics, just like this maker used in this particular quilt. This quilt is also tied with, I think, embroidery floss or some sort of floss or cording. And it's colorful, which I love because it coordinates with the colorful aspect of this quilt. I think it really just shines that you see all these wonderful different colors. It's a happy quilt, even though it's a very heavy, heavy quilt. Once these blocks are foundation pieced, they are sewn together to make this unit. Everything is done by machine. Now there are some polyesters in this, so that does date this to being after the 1950s, 1960s when polyester came onto the scene. There is no batting, but we are gonna talk about the inside in a minute, but first let's take a look at the back of this. Okay, so the back is interesting because we do see that it is a big green piece in the middle, and then around the edges is this wonderful I think they're seahorses, a uh, print fabric. And this print fabric is then pulled around to the front to finish the binding of this quilt, which you can see right here. So it's pulled around. You can also see those wonderful ties on the back. And interestingly, if you look over here, let me see if I can get it on camera, there are stitch marks as if maybe at one point it was attempted to be quilted or secured to the back somehow, where it looks like whoever did this, whether the original maker or not, did start to quilt this. Let's turn it around to the front again and talk about the borders. I folded it over so you can see 
the borders a little bit better. This is a, a definitely a heavyweight upholstery fabric in green, and the top and bottom borders are a little bit wider than the side borders, which tells me maybe they made it a little bit bigger to fit a bed or something like that. Another interesting thing that we see is sometimes the maker top stitched over the pieces that were added, which I forgot to mention before, and that might have been just to stabilize it. So inside this quilt is really interesting. It's almost like a secret uh, because I believe there may be another quilt inside of this. So I'm going to peek inside with you and see, and I already started to pull it apart. And you can see in there, something more is going on. And I'm not sure what, whether it's the foundation or actually another quilt. So I'm gonna take it apart a little bit more. I promise I will put it back together when I'm finished so I can keep this quilt intact. All right, that might be enough space to look inside. Let me see. So it does look like there's a muslin backing. It actually doesn't look like there's another quilt, but the foundation, at least for this block, was a scrap piece of blue fabric and some other pieces. Wow, it's really interesting. It's almost like the back foundation piece was actually pieced together too. What do you think? It's not another quilt because there are some raw edges, but we do have this weird pink fabric or purpley fabric that's underneath this block and the pink purpley fabric isn't on the top, but it is definitely the foundation. Oh, we have more of that. That's so interesting. Now I am curious if this is quilt or what. I don't want to take it apart anymore because I don't want to ruin it. There's some holes. I also don't want to take any of the ties out. Hmm, tell me what you think in the comments if this is another quilt. They would do that. That was something very popular to take an old worn out quilt and build upon it. Very interesting though. And like I said, I promise. I will take this and repair it. It was done by machine, so all I have to do is tuck that in and fold that over and sew it with some navy blue thread. There are so many lessons, as always, and I know I say that every time, that we can learn from this quilt. So let's get started talking about them. The first one is the size of the borders. As makers, sometimes we get stuck in a box where we think that all the borders have to be the same size, and that's simply not true. We can change the border sizes to accommodate a size of a bed or whatever we want to fit the needs of the quilt. We can also do it from a stylistic standpoint. Whether it be for function or for style, it's up to us if we wanna change those borders. Don't get stuck in some of these rules that are out there. Next, play with that pattern. If you are making a string quilt, you know, play with those darks or lights or whatever it is, the colors, whatever it is that's gonna set this apart. This gives the illusion of a lattice quilt in a way. And even though these strips aren't the same size, it still gives the eye something to look at and it adds interest to it. And finally, if you think there may be a quilt inside of one of your quilts, take a peek and see. You never know what you're gonna find out. Just make sure you can easily repair the quilt if you do take a peek inside. If you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. That really helps my channel. I have so many more quilts. I just went to an auction. I bought eight quilts at that auction. That was yesterday. So much fun. If you want a sneak peek of a few of them, you can check out my Instagram and I'll put the handle here and I'll also put a link in the first comment and in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I will see you soon. Bye.